Hey, happy Mother's Day. It's Maya, and I wanted to talk again about bullying. Um, it was interesting because after the last video, I was watching the news Friday evening, and there was a horrible story about eight-year-old Gabriel Tai in Cincinnati, who hung himself from his bunk bed two days after he was knocked unconscious in his Cincinnati school. That video was released. Um, it's not just him. There was also, let's see, 17-year-old Kenneth Sutner in Missouri, and uh, I think the manager for the Dairy Queen who worked at is actually now facing, um, is it, some sort of a manslaughter charge, um, more in the fact that he didn't educate or teach his employees about, you know, respectful treatment, um, well, no bullying in the workplace, but... And then there's 17-year-old Brandy Vela in Texas, and she was bullied for her weight. So those are just three of them. There's a whole page on Wiki about uh, suicides that are directly correlated or believed to be correlated um, with bullying. So, yeah, that is exactly why I wanted to share this story and exactly why I am grateful that one of my daughter's friends parents called the school principal to tell him about her text message. Now, my daughter knows and has told me and sworn up and down because I've kind of told her, I was like, you know, in the whole metaphysical theory, if somebody kills themselves, they're going to come right back and go through it again. And I've always told her, I was like, look, life is about learning. Life is about growing. And sometimes the experiences aren't going to be pleasant. But we have chosen to be here and we need to get through them. So I'm glad that um, she holds that to heart. And, you know, she is more empathetic than I am because I have little fantasies of revenge in my head. And yeah, she's like, no, mom, we don't want to hurt the bully. I'm like, yeah, I really kind of do, at least the mom, but I never would. Um, <laughs> obviously, they're in enough psychological pain. I don't need to do anything to them. They've done it to themselves. So what I wanted to talk about was stress and explain um, some of the reasons why stress actually will lead to physical illness. Because mind and body aren't really separate. They're kind of the same. So I'm going to go through a stack of my study cards from my biobehavioral health class to help explain the process. So that might be a little bit of a longer video. So that'll be coming up soon. But for an update on the situation, uh, the Delaware Attorney General, Matt Den, asked for me to email him. We emailed him. He's reviewing the file with his office. Um, and he updated us Friday about 7.20 at night, sent an email saying, I didn't want you to think I forgot about you. We are, um, you know, I'm looking at him, looking at the file. So we'll see. But, you know, there's one theme I see happening here is that the schools don't see the bullying quite as, well, don't see it as being quite as much of a problem as it is. Yet, you have kids killing themselves. I think that, again, a point I made, and it may have been on Kevin's uh, Exceptional Delaware blog, was, you know, stress over the long run and such. People run out of the ability to cope. They can't handle it. And people who bully to that extreme of a level, I mean, once or twice being bossy or mean is a normal rite of passage for kids. They just are in that, you know, when they're really young, second grade or third grade. But it shouldn't continue to the extent that Katarina has been enduring it and all of her other friends have been enduring it for all of these years. So, you know, it's nice that the school wants to believe that every kid is good and, and can be good. But the reality is this, after a certain period of time, whatever was causing the child to be a bully will continue to cause that child to be a bully, and they will run out of coping mechanisms. So this will become regular behavior, and actually I think it might come back to one of the models of addiction, actually. Um, where was the one I wanted? Of course, the rule staff one, I think. The reward model of addiction. Oh no, here it is. Reward models of addiction. And it's backwards. So yeah, that'll be useful. I might flip that sucker around. Overstimulation of the reward centers of the brain lead to repeated and sometimes obsessive desire for continued stimulation. So if somebody feels badly about themselves and they feel better by demeaning, degrading, hurting someone else, so let's see, they feel good. So they're going to continue to do the same thing. So it becomes a learned behavior, an addiction 
and it is a psychological dependency. They can't stop doing it. They cannot stop doing it. They do not feel good about themselves. The only way they do is by making someone else feel bad about themselves. So why do we keep thinking that these people will change? It's like any other addict. When they say, I won't touch it, I won't do it, it doesn't bother me, what happens when they start to go with, through withdrawal? So it's time to stop saying, oh, they're good kids, we've warned them, they won't do it. Really? What do drug addicts, addicts do? Same thing. Addiction doesn't have to be drugs or chemicals. Addiction can be processed, computers, phones. Addiction can be behavior, the way that we feel. Some people are flirts. They love to flirt because they like the feeling of flirting and the attention, but they don't want it to go any further. You know, there's psychological basis for all of these things. So principles, it's not changing. It's time to take action and you know who I'm talking to. Actually, a lot of them. Thank you. More to follow with the cards.